kicking off with the office, we'll have an overlook at the vacancy data. We'll look at the Q1 2024 status, the market trends, and then the tenant perspective. Thanks, Ed. So overall, Australian CBD office vacancy is sitting at 13.5% as of January. Um, if we look across Australia, most markets have recorded an increase or remain fairly stable aside from Perth, which recorded a decrease. Um, vacancy for prime office space was lower than uh, secondary assets in every capital city besides Sydney and Adelaide. So flight quality remains the trend. And there are a few drivers for this, as work from home allows tenants to reduce occupancy and put the space savings into better quality premises. There's also a desire for buildings with tenant amenities, such as end of trip, wellness offerings to attract workers back into office. And finally, there are increased expectations from tenants for sustainable buildings. So if we look over to New Zealand, Auckland has seen a slight decrease in vacancy and Wellington an increase. And this was given, new, given that there was new supply to the market. New Zealand has also seen that same flight quality trend play a big part in occupier decision making, along with sustainability credentials becoming an increasingly important factor in tenant leasing decisions. Over to Ken. Thanks, uh, Gillian and Ed. Uh, for those of you who have joined previously, you're probably familiar with this barometer. Um, so this barometer will feature throughout um, each of the three sectors and we'll um, position it as to where the barometer sits in terms of the leasing norms or leasing terms and the market conditions. With regard to the office sector, uh, leases are still very much um, drafted in favour of the landlord. Um, the there is a challenge um, as a tenant occupier to um, change a lease norms by incorporating uh, tenant friendly terms. Uh, in terms of the market conditions, it is still very much um, in favour of the tenant, as reported um, by Gillian in the statistics. However, in some capital cities, we are witnessing a shift uh, in favour towards the landlord side, um, as the supply decreases, in particular in Brisbane and Perth. Nevertheless, there are still very attractive deals to be had uh, for a tenant. Uh, just the quarter one twenty four uh, status um, demand for quality buildings, as Ed has touched on in the articles, businesses are still chasing higher grade office office space to attract and retain talent. Um, over the past quarter, there are also reports of um, the office market experiencing uh, positive net absorption absorption in the premium office space, whilst uh, ne negative absorption in the secondary space. This is also evident um, in the occupancy in premium buildings across. Uh, the state where um, it's reported that 90% of the premium grade assets are actually occupied. Um, with, with this in mind, there has been an increase uh, in the rise in the vacancy rates for the secondary grade building, uh, whilst the demand for uh, premium grade buildings continue. Um, this, the the rise in vacancy rate um, is particular um, evident in the non-CBD markets. Um, across the major capital cities, whereas um, if you look at Sydney and the metro markets, there are a number of uh, vacancies and in Melbourne along St Kilda Road where there are a number of uh, vacant spots. Um, look, in some cases, um, the space has been available um, for, uh, available for over 12 months as the depth of the tenant demand is just not there. I expect with fit outs, uh, you'll know, we've probably touched on this um, um, over the past few quarters. Whilst this has been a, a trend over the last 12 to 24 months, uh, we have started uh, to witness uh, the reduction or the, uh, the slowdown of um, speculative fit-outs as there have been a flood um, of these options available in the marketplace, uh, providing the tenant with a number of choices. Whilst the strategy has worked for some landlords, there are some landlords who are having very little to no activity. Um, an example of this is in the Western Corridor of the Sydney CBD, um, where a landlord has um, no inspections or no um, tours over the past 12 months. Uh, with this in mind, tenant demand has also started to slow down in the sub 500 and uh, 1, 1,500 square metre space um, over the quarter. This is uh, due, largely due to the, uh, the level of certainty um, that is still present in the marketplace. And as businesses, as uh, businesses are scrutinising and taking a closer look um, at their occupancy costs, uh, what are the market trends? Um, with the uh, rise in uh, vacancy rates in the secondary grey buildings, a number of 
landlords are um, uh, increasingly seeking alternative strategies actually to maximise the value of the assets as lo as these tenants uh, vacate the building buildings. Like examples of this um, are converting these buildings to hotels or residential apartment buildings. It's probably more common in Brisbane um, as they have the Olympics coming up in 2032, whereas in Sydney, um, they are embracing more of a build to rent uh, type model uh, for these secondary grade assets. Uh, flexible options, tenants and occupiers are still exploring a variety of alternative offerings that can provide the business with flexibility in comparison to uh, traditional leasing arrangements. Uh, these may be, uh, might be involved uh, selecting service offices, taking on subleasing or sharing um, office space um, uh, with shared amenities. We've also seen a number of landlords um, in the marketplace also uh, provide their own uh, style of third spaces, um, which will be self-managed um, as an additional offering um, to uh, the tenant who takes space within the building. Um, ESG, um, this is still uh, quite a, a strong trend in the marketplace um, as a number of businesses are um, trying to achieve their net zero uh, targets. Um, and we are seeing, we will see this uh, trend to continue um, over the next few years. Whilst the, land, whilst the market is still very much in favour of tenants, it does present uh, opportunities for tenants to go um, ahead well early of their lease expiry. For larger tenants, an integral part of this is um, understanding the development cycle and lease cycle to avoid uh, the potential fit, pitfalls of unfavourable cycles. An example of this is um, in uh, WA, we, we had a tenant who actually uh, restructured the lease five years out uh, from their expiry and were able to uh, bring forward to market incentives and cost savings uh, for the business. Uh, from our perspective, in this table, um, these are the, num the number of strategies we often um, advise our clients uh, with the targeted outcomes. And this table will also be featured uh, within the three sectors, retail um, and in industrial. Uh, for the office market, um, given that it is still very much a tenant favorable market, uh, there is an opportunity to uh, le restructure your lease before they expire, which ties in um, to the trend of uh, going early and really knowing um, uh, really leveraging the market conditions. Uh, the other um, strategy uh, is the premises due diligence uh, and the marketplace. Look, as businesses um, be, uh, as businesses are um, wanting their staff to come back to office and uh, the workplace is changing, um, it's uh, important to ensure that the premises or the building um, uh, is ver verified to ensure that the representations actually made by the landlord will uh, be suitable uh, for your business uh, requirements. An example of this could be the capacity of fresh air or uh, water if you are building um, large collaboration spaces um, within your, uh, your workplace. <laughs> Thank you.